You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Today's problem is titled Verify the Alien Dictionary. You are given a string key that contains the 26 English alphabets jumbled in some order. You are also given n words stored in an array str. Check if the words in str are sorted lexicographically according to string key. Now, this is a type of question that you will come across every so often where you're not able to glean much from the question at first glance. In order to really get into the nitty gritty, what we're going to have to do is look at the test cases and look at the explanation and see what that has to offer. With that being said, let's take a look at them. In case you want to solve the question, you want to understand it by yourself. I'll just leave each of these screens open for about a second or two each. Just have a look and pause the screen. After that, I'll explain it. This is the explanation bit. The first sample is above. The next two samples are below. It's curious, but that's how it is. Now that you've had a chance to have a look at the explanation and sample cases, let me try to elucidate the problem. Now we know our English alphabet runs from A through Z, A, B, C, D, E until Z. So if I were to give you three words, say apple, ball, chair, they're sorted lexicographically. It's because the first letters are in order A, B, C. Let's have a look at three words here. Comment, like, subscribe. Just a little bit of subliminal influencing going on here. But essentially, this is lexicographically sorted because C comes before L in the English alphabet and L comes before S. Let's have a look at these two, cooler and coolant. C-O-O-L, they're the same in both. E comes after A, which is why the first word is lexicographically greater than the second word. So this is not sorted in ascending order. Lexicographically sorted is essentially how it's placed in the dictionary, in the English dictionary. In the English dictionary, cooler would never appear before coolant. And let's finally have a look at these two, coolant and cool, C-O-O-L. These four letters are common to both. And now we've reached the end of the second string. In this condition, we've got to check whether the length of the second string is greater than that of the first. Only then it's said to be lexicographically sorted in increasing order. In this case, that's not true. So this is not sorted in increasing order. Now, according to the question, we're not using our English alphabet. Instead, we're going to imagine it doesn't start from A and ends with, with Z, but rather it's jumbled around in some order. So in this case, it starts with H. The next letter is E, the next letter is C, and so on until it ends with Z. So we've got to check whether these three words are lexicographically sorted according to this key, not according to our English alphabet, but according to this jumbled key. We can see right here that H comes before E and E comes before C. So straight away, we can say that these three words are sorted and our output will be one. Now for these two words right here, this new key, A, G, E, N are common to both of the words. Now between T and C, Let's check which comes before and which comes after. T comes after C. That's why this output will be zero because the first word is greater than the second word. It's not an increasing order. The final example, this is the key. These are the words. X, A, V, I, E are common to both, but the length of the second is less than the length of the first, which is why this is also false. The output will be zero. Now guys, I'll leave this open. This is a different problem. It's not the same as the ones we've tackled so far. It requires a bit more knowledge about string handling and processing characters. It's not just algebra and math. So with that being said, take a while, just think about it. I'll give you a clue in a bit. All right, guys, we're back. Now there's just one clue I think I can give you in order to solve this problem. And it's that we're going to have to create a map between each character in the key and its location. So if we were talking about A through Z, our map would be A is in location zero, B is in location one, C is in location two, so on, 
until Z is in location 25. So how do we do that with this key right here? That's for you to figure out. Just think about it. We'll solve it together right after this. Traditionally, if we were to make an array of length 26, it would be stored like this with the first index as zero and the last index as 25. We're going to imagine these arrays instead have characters as the indices. And it's pretty simple to convert a character to an index. Capital A has an ASCII value of 65. So all we do is we convert these characters into their respective ASCII values and just subtract 65 from that. Now, this is how the English alphabet looks. The character A is the first alphabet, which is why its location is zero. The character B is the second alphabet. Its location is one. C is the third alphabet. Its location is two and so on until Z, the final alphabet has a location of 25. Instead, let's try decoding this string right here, making an array which has the positions of each of these characters. And that array is going to look like so. Why does it look like this? Let's start from the top. H is the very first character. So when we go to H in our array, the respective location should be zero. E is our next character. So when we go to E, the location should be one. The third character is C. Third character means its index is two. So when we go to C, its index is two and so on for all the remaining characters. Let's consider a couple of scenarios. Now zero and one represent the word number. We're always gonna be checking two subsequent words at a time. And this box right here represents the column. Now strings are nothing but 2D character arrays. Meaning if we want to check the characters in the respective positions, all we do is check the columns. We're going to move on until we find two dissimilar characters. H and H are similar. A and A are similar. C and C are similar. K and K are similar. Now here we've reached the end of the first string, but the second string still has characters in it. Meaning the first string is valid. Let's have a look at another scenario. Here the two words are equal. E a, R, T, H. When we reach the end of our first string, again, we're going to see that since the two words are equal, it is in order. However, in this condition, when we move our J loop along till we find dissimilar characters, we hit this position right here, meaning the output is false. This is very similar to the case we discussed earlier. The final condition to consider is this one. We're going to move it until we find two unequal characters. We compare the two characters in our decoding array. If our decoding array tells us that T is less than C, then it's valid. And we move on to check the next two strings. In this case, there are no next strings. So our output will be one straight away. In case T is greater than C, our program will directly return zero. This here is the code to implement the logic we just discussed. In the very beginning, we're going to define a function to convert a character to its respective index. All we do is simply subtract 65 since 65 is the value of capital A. In case you're not sure, all you need to do is write this statement right here. This will return 65. Next, we'll have a look at this function right here. Initially, our decoder array is filled with zeros. This is where we populate our decoder array by iterating through our key and placing that key's index in its respective position. Finally, in this for loop, we iterate through two subsequent strings, that is i and i plus one, until we find two dissimilar characters. If we've happened to reach the end of the first string, the first string is valid. So we simply continue. All continue means is we skip all the remaining lines and we proceed to the next iteration. In case we've reached the end of string two, then our output is zero. And finally, if we've reached two dissimilar characters, we've got to compare their values in the decoder array. If the value of one is greater than the value of two, our output is zero. Now, if this for loop has managed to run through every single string without ever hitting these two conditions, that means it's valid. So our output is going to be one. Our sample test case have been passed. Let's hope the submit test works. One and two, all seven. 
have been accepted. Perfect. So guys, that's the solution to the problem. Verify the alien dictionary. If you like the problem and you like the solution, make sure to hit the golden trio, like, subscribe, and the bell icon. And if you have any doubts, any comments, any queries, make sure to leave them down below. You don't know it, but they actually do help us a lot. It's been Vivek, guys. I'll see you all next time.